I really mean what I say when we're blessed with children in the service. Right? But that also means that we make commitments to that, right? That means on the Connect card, whenever it says that we're looking for nursery volunteers, that means that you guys are the perfect um, demographic to do that because you attend the 9 o'clock service. And so, and we're not asking you to make a commitment until your death, um, <laughs> right? Even though I do, even though I do say um, this idea that um, we don't get to stop serving Jesus Christ until breath is out of our lungs and both feet are in the grave, right? But I really would encourage you. Um, here's what I know is that our nursery workers or volunteers or servants, whatever word you want to use, they don't get to come to church because they're serving. And as their pastor, that hurts my heart. Like they have to have a worship time because that's how we get recharged and fed. And who doesn't want to just help, you know, 20 little kids running around, wiping their nose, all of those things, right? And so I'm going to be excited today that when we look at the Connect card, um, there's going to be lots of people that have checked that box. I'll do an 11 o'clock um, nursery slot once a month, you know, that'd be great. Okay. Would you pray with me? God, we ask that as we hear the, your words this morning, that I'm simply a, a messenger. I'm a, a vessel that um, is pouring out what we need to hear. And so God, help guide this sermon. And allow it to fall on our hearts so that life change happens in a dramatic way. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I don't know about you guys this morning. Um, I love Sunday morning before church because there's this excitement. There's this rush um, of, of coming into the sanctuary of kind of like the first day of school, right? Of seeing new friends. It's like, ah. Like, so um, we had a first-time visitor that I got to meet, and they said, oh, we saw one of our neighbors here. And that's what our community is about, right? This collection of people that have come. I, I always think that Sunday morning is a little weird, if I'm, if I'm really, really honest, okay? Okay. Like, we gather in a room, and we listen to somebody talk for 15, okay, let's be real, 25 minutes, and, um, and then we go home, or we have a donut. It's just, the practice seems odd a little bit, but if we look at it as this idea of it is a time that we are gathering, that's what Jesus did, friends, is he gathered he gathered people together so that they could love on each other, so that they could, you know, be with each other. They could share life together. Friends, that's what we're doing here at North Cross, is that we are going to have um, deep, deep relationships about investing in one another and loving each other, right? That, that is our hope and our goal. So we're stepping into this time of growth and connection and renewed purpose. And today we're talking about one of the foundational pillars of our success, which is building and maintaining healthy relationships within the church. Like, I have to be honest with you, probably some of the most unhealthy relationships I've ever experienced in my life is where? Church. Church. Ugh. Friends, that makes my job really, really hard. Because honestly, sometimes we are just downright mean people. Why? Why? Today we're going to be using um, Colossians 3, 9 through 17. Um, and it's going to be our guide that's going to help direct us through these essential topics about forgiving each other and how we handle conflicts with one another. I absolutely love this passage. I'm using the message version. And I think that when, I, when I've read it several times, I just go back and look at it and I'm like, ugh, like God was speaking to me a little bit. And so I'm hoping that um, he speaks to you a little bit as well this morning. So here are these words out of Colossians. Don't lie to one another. We could just stop right there, right? Isn't that a foundational truth? Don't lie to one another. You're done with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitted clothes that you stripped off and you put into the fire. And now you're dressed in a new wardrobe. 
Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the creator with his label on it. All of the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish, religious and irreligious, insider and outsider, uncivilized and uncouth, slave and free, they mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, and discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense, Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's all basic. It's, all, it's an all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivating thank- thankfulness Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, friends. Sing your hearts out to God and let every detail in your lives, your words, your actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus. Thanking the God the Father, for every step along the way. Friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. I have to be honest, um, it had been a while since I had read that passage. And whenever I came across that passage again, and I was was looking at this sermon um, for today, it was spot on. It was exactly what I needed to hear. And I think it's exactly what we that are living in this world need to hear today. As we continue on our series of Healthy Things Grow, um, if you look at the altar, you'll see that we have these four vases, and they remind us of the parable of the sower that we talked about last week, where the seeds that we are scattering are really, really important, that some of them fall on the pavement, and that's not a place for them to grow. Some of them fall on rocks and, and, and mulch, and it's difficult to grow in that medium as well. Sometimes there's a lot of thorns and weeds that kind of trap us. This morning, um, we were blessed with um, Beth, and Beth had taken this um, vine. I don't know what it's called. What, I don't, does anybody know the name of this? Vidalia? Philodendron. Thank you so much. And, um, and so it's kind of been, it's taking root and planting and growing. I, I don't know. We're going to see what happens with this thing. It might, we come in one day and the whole room is filled. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. But that's what we're trying to do here, friends, is we have to plant these seeds of our faith in fertile soil or maybe in these little like beads things. I don't, you know, those little, I don't know what they're called, gel beads. Today, we're going to focus on this idea of why and how is it important for us to grow as a church family together? Does anybody think that's important? A few of you, hopefully. I hope so. In our scripture from Colossians, Paul gives us a very clear guide on how to live in harmony and how to love your church. Now let's break it down and let's see how that we can use this to create a vibrant, healthy community. Because I know that myself as your pastor, that is my goal. That's the, that's the reason why I exist, is to be God's servant, to make this place a healthy, vibrant community where we can grow deep in our faith with one another. Paul starts by telling us to leave behind our old ways, like taking off a set of dirty clothes, right? Now, there is something good about getting our hands dirty and getting into the earth. I I think they call it grounding or so. And um, there's something about physically touching the soil. But also like, you know, if you go too many days and your, your clothes is soiled, like it gets a little stinky, right? <laughs> and there's something about a nice set of clothes. And this is what I know. Not everybody is fortunate enough to be able to have 
clean clothes. God wants us to be transformed regardless if we have the resources to do laundry or not. He wants us to have change in our hearts and our lives. The very first words that he said in this, he says, don't lie to each other. Friends, he stresses the importance of honesty and integrity in our relationships. And in our new life, everything that we do should reflect God's character. Everything. The way, the new way of living doesn't care about the old labels that we have. Have any of you guys have a label on your heart that maybe somebody has placed there that you don't deserve? And that maybe they said you're not worthy or you're not valuable enough to come to church. Right? Don't listen to them. God is calling you. God is saying, I don't want you to take on any labels because you are worthy. And you are wanted in this place. As God chooses people, we need to put on the qualities that he has picked out for us. Ones of compassion and kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Oh, that last one, friends, it is hard. You know me. I'm not a very patient person. And I think one of my patience comes, or my lack of patience, comes from truly deep down my, my desire and my heart to do as much as I can For the kingdom of God until I no longer have breath in my lungs. Right? I hope that every day I can wake up with new energy, with a newfound love of Christ. And I look into the world and I say, God, where do you want me to go today? And to be flexible enough. You know, on Thursday, I had a whole agenda set forth. Mary and I were going to meet, and and we were going to talk about worship, and and we were going to do slides and all these things and get ready. But God had a different plan. God had a plan for me to talk to an individual that um, is homeless. And the miracle about that hour-plus-long discussion was the gentleman had called his mom, who lives in Lee Summit, And she was coming up just to check on her son, who has been homeless for seven years, and to take him to lunch. And so the three of us sat around this little table in our our lobby here, and we talked. And on one side, I saw a mom that was desperate for her son to find new life. And then the young man, I saw tears in his eyes. He was just trapped by a level of addiction. Trapped by this really sickness of homelessness. He's been homeless for seven years. Friends, it's hard to get out of those cycles, right? I haven't shared with you all yet, um, but one of my addictions that you, some of you might know, is I'm a food addict. And Food, for me, is like cocaine. And I say that very genuinely. It creates the same dopamine response that a crack addict gets whenever they take a hit of crack or a meth addict takes when they take meth. So my whole life, I have yo-yoed up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. One of the things that I know is that in my frustration with my own addiction, I have to be patient with myself a little bit, right? I have to give myself a little bit of grace. You see, qualities like this are essential for our relationships with one another. We need to be even-tempered, not always needing to be first. And friends, we need to be quick to forgive one another. Our forgiveness should be as complete as the forgiveness that we receive from Jesus Christ. And above all, Paul tells us to put on love. It's like an everyday outfit, something that we should never be without. Love is what keeps us unified and united. Paul talks about this idea of letting peace of Christ rule in our hearts, helping us stay in tune with each other. Being thankful is a crucial part 
of who we are as Christians. Gratitude, friends, helps us to create a positive and a harmonious environment. Letting Christ's message dwell among us means his teaching should guide us in everything that we do. We should encourage help and wisdom with each other. We should always be aiming to uplift and build each other up, right? I mean, friends, we live in a messy world. As I was scrolling Facebook, you know, one of the things that pops up is different stories that kind of happens. And a story of a lady came up where she went to McDonald's and she got a Big Mac. She took it to go, went through the drive-thru. She got home. She's ready to eat. She opens up her Big Mac. And what do you think? There's no meat. No meat. Yeah. It's a good one, isn't it? Now, we can like storm across and be angry and run back to McDonald's and throw our sack on the table and rah, you know, and just kind of diarrhea all over the place. We're good at that. You know what she did? She says, hey, I think there is a different method to this. She just simply went back and she laughed about it. She pulled up to the counter and, you know, she took out her thing. She goes, there's no meat. You know, I, I think there should be some meat on this. And her and the cash register person, they had this, this dialogue and this laughter. There was something that happened to the person that was putting meat on the bun that they had a momentary slip and they thought it was a vegetarian Big Mac, okay? <laughs> but the way, the way that she responded to that, it really spoke to me. I don't know if the story is true or not. I'm sure that there's somebody in the world that's gotten a Big Mac with no meat on it. But what I do know that's true is every single day of our life, we are met with challenges and opportunities to respond and react in a different way that more models Jesus Christ, right? I'm sure, friends, as your pastor, I'm going to do things that you want to just... <laughs> I need your grace, just like everybody else. Please, just because I stand elevated above you by a few steps, please don't ever put me on a pedestal. I'm an everyday, ordinary person just like each of you that has this special calling to try to love you guys like God loves you and to point you in a direction that God wants you to go. That's all I am. So in our worship, in our daily lives, let's do everything that we can to name Jesus and to give him. God thanks. This approach ensures that everything we do, our words, our actions, our interactions, they reflect our commitment to Christ and they help us to um, contribute to a healthy, growing, vibrant community. If you've been in the um, kind of the motivation um, world, um, you might have heard a name um, of an individual called Simon Sinek. Anybody heard Simon Sinek before? Yeah. You introduced me to Simon. Thank you. Appreciate you. Simon said this, a culture is strong when people work with each other for each other. A culture is weak when people work against each other for themselves. Amen, right? Simon points out wisely that a culture is strong when people work with each other for each other. Culture is weak when people work against each other for themselves. Friends, this ties directly into what Paul is teaching us in Colossians. Paul calls us to point out the qualities like compassion and kindness and humility and love, and that these qualities should foster a very strong, healthy church culture where we support and we uplift each other. And when we embody these values, we create a community where everyone works together for the common good and that we're reflecting on Christ's love. But however, if we fail and we fall into the traps of the world, we start working against each other for personal glory, for personal gain, our church culture will weaken. The seeds of faith that we sow will struggle and they'll die out. So my hope and my prayer is this. Together, we are committed 
to building a very strong culture at North Cross United Methodist Church where we can be a beacon of hope, where we truly work with each other and for each other, that we are ensuring that we are planting deep, deep roots for a fertile faith. Friends, that's why we had to make hard decisions like this, right? I mean, I got a message from a friend. They had seen the e-news and they said, ooh, that's a challenge for your first three weeks, friend. I want to let you know I'm praying for you. Nobody wants to go into a place and slash $81,000. But friends, I would be remiss if I allowed us to go one more week without making some pretty significant corrections immediately. Now, I don't want you to look at this and say, oh my God, the ship's going down, they hit an iceberg. No, not at all. This is about being good stewards, about being faithful stewards. Later on in the service, we're going to be taking an offering. And and I want you to know every single Sunday that when you give your offering, that you have a penny pension pastor that's going to make sure as much of that offering goes to serving Jesus Christ out in the world, right? That's our hope and our goal. I want you, as you give, to know that there's great accountability in everything that's happening and how we're spending the fruits that you had worked hard to earn, right? That's our hope, and that's my goal as your pastor. Today, like every Sunday for the last three weeks, we have welcomed a lot of new first visitors. Praise be to God for that, right? I hope that As you see them or see somebody's face that you don't recognize or know, I hope that you're introducing yourselves to them, making them feel hospitable and welcome to this place. I hope that you're living out the values of what's in Colossians. I hope that we're not one of those churches where we're kind of the mean Christians, right? I hope that North Cross is this place where healthy relationships thrive, And where the love of Christ is evident in everything that we do. So let's commit to this together to ensure that our church is welcoming, loving, and it's a supportive community. This is what I know. Healthy churches practice grace and forgiveness. I don't know why you're here today. I don't know why maybe this is the first time that you've come. I don't know how long all of you have been coming to this church. But I'm humble enough to say to you that if the church in some way has hurt you, I'm sorry. If the church has somehow shunned you or told you that you're not worthy, that you're not good enough, I'm sorry. If my actions as I am your pastor over the next however long God blesses us to be together, if I do something and I stub my toe a little bit, I'm sorry. My heart is about unifying us and guiding us to a place of very vulnerable, honest relationships. Can we do that together, friends? That's my hope and my goal. One of the most powerful ways that we can grow as a healthy church, again, is by practicing forgiveness generously. And this is hard. In Matthew 18, 21 through 22, Peter asked Jesus, Lord, how many times should I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? (laughs) Jesus laughs. I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times seven times. Right? Right? The passage challenges us to embrace a culture of limitless forgiveness, going beyond what we think is reasonable and reflecting God's endless grace in our relationships. Imagine a church where forgiveness flows freely, where grudges don't take hold, and where we actively seek reconciliation with each other. The kind of culture doesn't happen overnight. It takes intentional effort on every one of our parts. To make this a reality, we have to create opportunities for our members to share their stories of forgiveness. 
These testimonies will not only inspire others, but also show the transformative power of grace in our lives and in our community. You know, one of the things that I had to learn in the surprise of me coming back as your pastor, friends, trust me, it was as much as a shock to me as I know it was to all of you all. And I have to be honest, when I was meeting with the bishop, and he was asking if this is where our family would go, my love and anxiety went through the roof. It really did. So maybe there was, maybe there was a little bit of emotion there that said maybe I wasn't worthy enough. Maybe there was a little emotion there that said, some of you were downright mean to me, right? And so in coming back to this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful place, I had to do some soul searching myself and to say, God, mend my heart and make it new. Where there needs to be forgiveness, allow forgiveness to prevail. Where there needs to be reconciliation, allow reconciliation to prevail. And we can't just flip a switch, friends. It is about deep, deep commitment that we share together. And we're going to share that together missionally. We're going to focus our community where healthy relationships are the heart of everything that we do. Healthy relationships allow us to focus on reaching out and expanding God's kingdom. And when we resolve conflicts and we maintain healthy relationships with each other, we remove barriers that hold us back. So we're going to create mission opportunities and projects that require teamwork and cooperation. They're going to reinforce this idea that we have to have very healthy relational health to do God's kingdom work together. And as we work together harmoniously, we're going to celebrate the successes that God has, right, in this place. We're going to celebrate the miracles that we see unfold before us. Because we're going to dream like we have never dreamed before. We're going to dream these dreams that, friends, we cannot accomplish on our own. We can only accomplish them because Jesus Christ is our foundation. Amen? In this new season, let's commit to being a church that forgives generously and reflects Christ's grace and is missionally focused. Friends, healthy things grow. We are going to be a healthier and healthier church every single week. Every week that we've been here, there's been steady growth. There's been new people, new relationships, new friendships. We are going to do the things that are necessary for us to plant really deep roots. I don't know about you, but that really excites me. Yeah. Let's be a beacon of hope showing the world that the transformative power of God's love through our actions and relationships can look radically different than the world that we live in. We're going to go out into the world today. I don't want to share that bad news with you. You don't get to stay here forever. (laughs) It's a good place. I love it. But you're going to go out from here in just a little bit. Please, friends, carry the lessons of love with you and grace. Please carry with you this idea that forgiveness can come in your heart. Whether you're stepping into a new job, maybe you're going into a new um, um, classroom, maybe you're nurturing new families, remember that each relationship that you encounter throughout this week, it offers an opportunity for you to reflect the light of Christ to somebody. So let's make it our mission to build bridges together, to deepen connections together, to bring others um, closer, not just to each other, but to the heart of the church and to the heart of who Jesus is. Let us not leave this place the same, but let us leave this place inspired, ready and equipped to make a real difference in our world, showing kindness, seeking understanding, And when conflict arises, friends, conflict will happen. That's a natural part of life. We will handle them with care and wisdom. 
that hopefully God gave to us a little bit today as we heard God's message. And let's remember that we are called every single day to reflect the love of Christ. Amen? Amen. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, thank you so much.